All we need is a little understanding Walk a mile in their shoes And if we keep our hearts open-minded We'll enjoy this wild ride called life And if we keep our hearts open-minded We'll enjoy this wild ride, this wild ride called life <laughs> hey everybody this is a true sweetheart podcast and we have rachel hollis on today and i wanted to bring her on because i wanted you guys to see the behind the scenes of a person like her i have looked up to her for quite a while as many of us had and i think she's amazing and one of the reasons why i wanted to start my own entrepreneurial journey and author and all the things so miss rachel thank you so much for being on here i really appreciate your time and i wanted to just dig into how does it how do you balance all the things with being this person that we're all looking up to you does it are you do you feel pressure at times with trying to be the person that we think you know you should be or i mean i think it's so interesting you know the the theme of your podcast because i think i really do live publicly as myself um the good and the bad like i think mm -hmm. that I, i've been doing social media for over a decade I was a blogger long before that. And so I'm used to being in community with women online and have shown up as myself, even in the hardest seasons. Um, so for me, I don't, I don't feel a ton of pressure to be a certain way or kind of act a certain way. I think if anything, in the past, I have felt pressure to show up when I didn't feel like showing up. I think that that's maybe the hardest part of kind of doing what I do is I have been in community with women, some women for so long that I think that there were times in my life where I really emotionally didn't feel well, or maybe physically didn't feel well. And I still, you know, because I want to put positivity out in the world. I, and I felt like people were counting on me that I would show up and be like, Hey guys, how you doing? And sort of give the last remaining energy that I had to my audience as opposed to understanding that I have that I can have boundaries in place and that if I'm not taking care of myself I can't serve anybody else I can't take care of my kids and so I've really learned that over the years to balance that better and to have the freedom to to just truly show up when and how it feels appropriate for me that's perfect. I was actually going to ask you about boundaries. How do you set them when it comes to real life versus social media? I know I try because I'm a big mental health advocate and I really try to show my real self. It's hard sometimes because I feel like oh, I'm not showing up today. Should I just put it on social media or you know what? Screw it. I'm not. I, I just I'm not going to be here today. So how do you how do you do that? I think that it really comes with listening to yourself and knowing yourself and what you need. And that might sound kind of like a throwaway answer, but I really do think that's something I've had to learn uh, over the last five years, especially, is slowing down enough to ask whether or not this feels right in my spirit. Um, does this feel good in my heart? Does this feel good for me right now? Or is it something that I need to just let myself rest and sit. And, you know, I talked about this a lot in Girl, Wash Your Face, which I wrote sort of end of 2016 into 2017. So it's been a while. But my biggest struggle at that point was like pushing myself too hard. I couldn't stop moving. I was a workaholic. Like I couldn't, I, I really struggled with slowing down. And, you know, I'm 38 now and feeling so like grateful that I have learned this lesson over the last several years of just feeling good about saying no. Um, and I think that, gosh, there has been so much hardship inside of this pandemic, but you know me and I really do 
live my life trying to look for the goodness, even in hard things. And um, the goodness that I have taken out of 2020 and, you know, 2021 so far is I appreciate the slower pace. I am really grateful for um, that stillness. At first, it kind of threw me off because I was used to going so, so fast. But in that stillness, has been time to meditate and pray and journal and do all the virtual therapy and really slow down and know myself. And actually was talking to my therapist about this last year. And I said, you know, I'm trying to understand boundaries better. And what do you tell people when they're trying to figure out like where to even erect a boundary for yourself? And she said, well, if you're not sure, then I like to tell people that if you are asking for something that someone else is saying that you're being selfish or that you shouldn't want that or that you should show up for me, that is usually the first sign that there needs to be a boundary there. Mm -hmm. Because if you need something and someone else is pushing back on what you are saying, I need this, not just I want this, but I need this for my mental health, my emotional health, whatever. And someone else is clapping back at that or trying to persuade you or kind of get you to do something else. That's usually a big sign to me that, oh, I need to have a boundary here and I need to hold this you know, in place for myself. I will say too, honestly, a big, um, just because I love tactics, but a big um, thing that I've learned this in 2020, and this was, this is hard for me because I am non-confrontational. I hate arguing. I hate fighting. And oftentimes I will just say nothing rather than say what I'm really feeling or thinking. And one of the most empowering things I have learned over the last nine months is to speak my truth, even if it upsets the other person. Um, and that has been, I can't even explain like how liberating that has been. And I don't mean in a mean way, but just yeah. in a like, no, this is not okay. And you can't speak to me like that. And I'm not, you know, that kind of thing. And the freedom that that has given me. And also I feel like it has made my relationships with people stronger because I am, I, I feel safe. I have trust. Like, I feel like boundaries keep us safe. I don't think boundaries keep us away from people. Mm -hmm. I think it makes us feel like I can be in this relationship with you and not worry that you're going to take advantage. That's really important. And I love how you said that you spoke to your therapist about this because it is so in this society, I think with the stigma of mental health, so many people are afraid to just go speak to somebody because they think they're yes. going to be frowned upon. Right. It's, it's okay. It's we better than okay. Everybody, everybody, everybody should be in therapy. And I, you know, you have to know, I did not grow up in a culture that believes that, um, you know, and, that, and most of us don't really grow up in a place that kind of encourages us in that way. But I always think therapy is so fantastic because when you talk, even if it's like your best friend in the world or your sister, or the people that love you most, the the information that you're going to get back is going to be through the lens of the whole history that they know. Mm -hmm. And so they're not really answering where you're at. They're answering through their lens. And the power of a counselor or a therapist is that they don't have that backstory. Mm -hmm. So all they're processing is where you are right now, which is what we need. And sometimes going to therapy can be jarring because if you're trying to work through something and I've done this in my life, where I'm like, Oh, I know I need to go talk to someone about this, but I also know it's probably going to be about six months, you know, of really trying to unpack this and it's going to be hard work, but my gosh, the liberation on the other side of it is so worth the time and the energy. And just like anything else, you know, it's going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It isn't comfortable to go sit with someone and be truthful with them and yourself but it is so powerful in helping you um, learn what you need to learn about yourself and get tools to help you manage the world around you. I agree with you. And I was stubborn for many years. I've got this. I don't need any, I don't need anybody's help. I don't, I don't need to talk to anybody, but I think it was just because of the culture with how we grew up. We didn't really do that. You didn't really go see somebody. So how do you, with being so present with all of us, have you had that conversation with your kids? Like, this is what mom does. This is why I do it. Because I know with me, 
my kids see me on Instagram. So anytime I, I make a post, they're like, mom, why did you say that? But we have the conversation now that this is why I do it is to help other people. So I'm just curious. You're yeah, so open. you know, it's, it's a funny time because my kids aren't my, my two oldest are in middle school and they have TikTok but they don't have Instagram or Facebook or, and you know, they fight me on it all the time. And I'm like, well, you know, I'll die on this hill. <laughs> like we're not doing that. Um, but now for the first time ever, their friends are seeing things or um, they'll, they'll be a video. And often what they bring to me is not stuff that I have done. It's stuff that other people have created about me. And usually it's things that are mean yeah. to be totally honest. Um, you know, my, um, my middle schooler had like in the for you page had been served a TikTok video that was someone making fun of his parents getting divorced. Mm. And, um, I like it gutted, it gutted me. And what guts me is that I am, I'm believe in the good of people. And I believe that the person who made that video as a joke doesn't understand that a 12 year old boy is going to see that about his parents. Um, but also what I thought was so beautiful was he was just like, Oh, whatever. Like that oh. person's being mean, like who cares? And I'm over here like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I don't really, you know, they've grown up with me as a writer. They've grown up with me, you know, do, speaking on stages and my kids have always been a part of my business. I have talked about owning a company, being a female entrepreneur, being a CEO, all of that since they were babies. And back when we still traveled, they traveled with me on business trips. Like I always want my kids to see this world, especially my boys. I mean, my daughter's still so little, but especially the boys, because I want them to see a woman doing things that maybe you don't typically see a woman do. Um, so I think it feels pretty normal for them, but, um, yeah, I, I wasn't prepared for how kind of other people's visions of me would kind of make their way to my kids. But that's also, you know, this is the world that we live inside of. That's true. I'm so glad that he was just like, whatever, and brushed it he off. Really he really was. I was like, wait, say that again to me. I want to write. And I can't even remember what he said, but it was like <laughs> such a good line. I'm like, I need to write that down because I need to have a 12 year old's attitude about, you know, someone making mean videos. It's incredible what we can learn from our kids. Honestly. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you ever suffer from imposter syndrome? I definitely did when I was earlier in my career, but Annette, like no joke, I am the most confident person you will ever. I am I so, that. I just, I trust myself. I have worked so hard. I have faith in, you know, the, I have faith in myself. I have faith in the creator that gave me this position that we're not set up for anything that we can't figure out. Um, I really do. Maybe every once in a while, I, you know, cause I'm having like, I'm sort of getting to a place in my career where I'm getting to meet with bigger people with bigger platforms and stuff like that. But even, I mean, I got to speak for Oprah last year and I got to hang out with her for a little while. And even in that moment, I was like, be present, stay present, <laughs> stay in your body, like be here, do not freak out. And I, yeah, so I don't, I honestly think that the, it's this catch 22 because the answer to imposter syndrome is just doing the thing. But imposter syndrome is what makes us believe we can't do the thing or that we don't deserve to do the thing. And it's kind of like, you know, I'm a, I'm a long distance runner. So a lot of my analogies end up being about running. But for me, I think of it as like, it's one foot. You just have to keep put, putting one foot in front of the other. And I swear to you, I don't care if you've ever run before, if you hate running, if you will just keep putting one foot in front of the other, you'll get there. But you have to keep moving. Um, so I definitely struggled with it when I was younger. But but today I am I'm very confident in myself because I know I know without question, I'm going to screw up without question because I'm going to keep trying things. And when you keep trying things, you will absolutely make mistakes, but I don't fear the mistake. And I trust myself to figure it out. If I do fall. That's incredible. I, that's so funny story. And I'm sure you've heard this a lot. That was me before I came on here with you. I was like, Oh my God. Da, da, da. And my husband's like, Annette, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, but look, okay, this is something your listeners have to hear. Okay, I love the reason I'm sitting here with you right now is because you had the audacity to ask, right? So you never freaking know. Like, I don't even remember what the post was, but you just happened to be the very first comment and you were like, how about doing my podcast? And I was like, sure. And here we are. <laughs> I cannot tell you, you and your listeners, how often in my career I've just asked for the thing. And I've been shot down a million times, so much so that it doesn't bug me if I get shot down. But I just keep asking. And every once in a while, you will have the opportunity. Like, um, I, for the longest time, I, uh, if you know, if you follow me, you know, I love The Rock. I admire him so much. And, <laughs> yes. Yes. And he is represented by this agent, this like big agent that represents like The Rock and LeBron James and Octavia Spencer, just super big, high profile people. And I, I admired this guy and I was like, man, what would it be like? Like, that would be so crazy. And I got connected with him and I was like, we were going to like, oh my gosh, would this person take a call with me? Like, this is crazy. He wouldn't take a call with me. Would he take a call? And I was like, I'm just going to ask. Like, what's the worst? I'm already at no. I'm already living with him not being my agent. So what's the worst if I just ask for a call? So I asked for a call. I was just like, hey, would you ever jump on the phone with me? And he was like, yeah, what are you doing right now? Let's talk right now. And I am not, I was wearing a moo moo. My hair was like frizzy and crazy and I had no makeup on. I looked like trash, <laughs> trash. And I was just like, this is it, dude. Like you asked, the universe said yes. You either move right now and you have the courage to just do this thing and trust yourself or, yeah. or maybe you're never going to know or maybe you're never going to get another call. And I literally did that call with him looking like garbage and he's my agent. Cause I just, you know, like it, it was a, and I, yes, there were other things that went into like a career of work that went into being able to sign with someone at his level. But I don't know if I would be in the position I'm in today, if I hadn't had the courage to ask. And then this is the key. When someone gives you the opportunity, you have to be ready. You have to be ready. It's like people get so discouraged with this, like with waiting with waiting for the dream that they want, with sort of, man, I'm working so hard and I just want this thing to click. I just want this thing to, to happen. That waiting period is when you are preparing. I'll go back to Oprah. One of my favorite quotes of all time is hers. And I saw this when I was a teenager. She said, there is no such thing as luck. There is only preparation meeting opportunity at a moment in time. So when you have the shot, when you've asked for the thing and you get, that may be your only chance. So are you ready to step into that? You know, whether you believe in yourself or not, are you ready to step into it once you have the, once you have the chance? That's incredible. And congratulations on that. But you're right, right? You just have, right. we're already living in the know. So yep. what's it that's and I, yeah, I, I, I think like, well, man, you're not going to be your, your, your abilities, your, um, your, your ability to write or speak or do any of those things that this person as a business partner would be interested in. Do not go up if you have makeup on, yeah. right? Like it doesn't change. So you can either jump into this thing or miss the opportunity. And I don't miss an opportunity. <laughs> I, I love your positivity. It's taken me a long time to get there, but I, I think just watching positive people, positive influencers helps tremendously. So I think it's all about really who you surround yourself with and who you, you know, who you're looking up to. And I think it's, it's absolutely incredible. Is there, has there ever been a time where you just wanted to give up? It was too much. And you're like, I can't. Um, yes. Uh, two times that I can think of. Um, one is uh, you know, girl, wash your face exploded. And I had no preparation for that. And it is like, a like such an insane blessing. But also, I can't explain how overwhelming it was unless you're inside of it. And um, at that whole year, the whole of 2018 and into 2019, I just kept daydreaming about what it would be to just like quit 
everything and like start a farm or like <laughs> go like be a barista. I'm not kidding. I was so overwhelmed because I think, you know, maybe what people who are new to, to hanging out with me don't realize is that I worked at that for 15 years. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, but if you've been working in obscurity for 15 years and happily, like very happily, just like doing my little thing and having my 12, you know, people who followed me, well, that sounds like Jesus, having my like 20 people who followed me and like them that, you know, and, and that was great. And then all of a sudden it just, and I didn't know how to handle it. So I daydreamed a lot about that and then really had to do a lot uh, again, a lot of therapy, a lot of prayer um, to understand what it was that I wanted out of my life. Do I want to keep showing up in this way or do I want to kind of step back? And um, the other time was last summer when I announced that I was getting divorced. And um, my community is so incredible and I had so much like beautiful, kind support and a lot of people who were vicious. And um, that felt debilitating because like it's like kicking someone when they're at their lowest, which is something I can't even comprehend. Um, that just was devastating. And I was like, I'm, I'm going to quit social. I'm going to just stop. I was like, I'm done. Um, and I think it was the same as like when you go through a breakup and you like get bangs. Um, so I was very emotional and I didn't do anything drastic, but I just felt really low. And I think in, in those moments, we're listening to the voice of a few instead of the support of many. You know, we have that negative self-talk in the back of our mind and then someone out in the crowd kind of picks up what is playing in the back of your mind and then you believe that it's real. And so it just took, you know, it took me stepping back. And I mean, this is the theme, prayer, therapy, time with myself to understand how I want to show up in the world and what I want to do. Um, But you have to like, it has to be, you have to be passionate about what you're doing. And I think when you're serving other people, it is actually pretty easy to lose the passion because when you're serving other people, you're constantly pouring out, constantly giving, 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 and your cup's getting run very low. And I think what people don't, doesn't click for people is that your passion about a subject is what fills your cup back up. It's about self-care. It's about all of those things. But also if you're not excited and you know, feeling great about what you're doing, that will burn you out faster than anything else. So me really, um, and I think you can see this on social, as I stepped into this year, especially, I was like, I'm just going to go back to doing whatever I want. I'm going to make rage talk and it's just going to be fun and silly. I'm going to do podcasts about anxiety. I'm going to write fiction books. I'm going to just do what I actually started out in this space doing because that I'm passionate about it. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there are people who will be interested in that. And if other people would prefer I only ever teach and motivate, then great. Okay, go watch my old stuff. Or maybe this isn't the right person for you to hang out with. Um, But tapping back into your passion. And, you know, a lot of people call it your why. Mm -hmm. And I do believe we have to know our why. But that's not quite enough. Because you could say, well, my why is I want to help other women X, Y, Z. And that can be a really powerful why, but that can still be just so draining on your system. So you have to tap into that sort of creative spark or the thing that made you excited because Annette, you could have wanted to help women in a lot of different ways. And you chose a podcast because there was something about that that fed your spirit right? Like whatever, however it is you show up, maybe those posts on social media that freak out your kids. There's something about that, that like, like fed your heart. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that it's not just about the why, but it's also about what is the passion and the energy that's going to surround that why that will keep you going when you feel depleted. Absolutely. No. And I used to say that too, but now you made me start thinking because I used to say, what is your why? But it's much more than that. So I, yeah. I love that. I appreciate it. And I'm starting to think about that, but you're, you're right. If there is something about it that this is, I have to keep 
the only way to keep showing up is if I, it's my passion. If I really yes. want what I really yes. want to do this for and why. So I really, I really love okay. that. What would you tell somebody when there's, there's often a lot of us who are on social media, we're so worried about numbers and comments and likes and followers. Right. And so what would you tell somebody who's like, ah, well, I don't have enough followers. I mean, man, I, okay. So, so two, like one sort of preachy thing and then one practical thing. Here's the preachy thing. If you have six followers, you better serve those six followers. Like you have 6 million. That is how you build a community. You take care of the people who are already spending time with you because there's no like, yes, maybe you'll have a, a post that goes viral, but really how you grow your your community is that they tell other people about how great you are. They yeah. share your message. They put the word out. And the only way they do that is if you show up and you serve them well. So that's sort of the preachy thing. And then the just like the tactical piece is I swear to you that this it's like this. This is how building a brand goes. You're like, nobody cares, nobody cares, nobody cares, nobody cares. And then but most people will not stay in it long enough to ever experience the exponential growth. It takes a while. Again, unless you just have something that goes viral, but like you can't bet on that. Right. So if you go back to your passion again and you're like, well, I'm showing up here for six people and I'm doing it in this way because it's what makes me excited and I get you know, pumped to get out of bed in the morning, that is what's going to grow the community. If you are on social, if you're building a brand, if you're building a business for those likes, for that attention, for those followers, you're never, I swear to you, it will never be enough. Because I, there were times I had 200 followers and I didn't feel like it was enough. And I've had 200,000 followers and still felt like I wasn't at enough. It really has to come from a place of what feels good in your heart, right? And, um, you know, I, I posted this when, Biden got elected. I posted a picture. I'd interviewed him for my podcast. And I was like, how many people have a picture with the president? That's cool. So I posted a picture with the president and just said, hey, a country still has a long way to go. We've got a lot of stuff to do. But look at this, right? I lost 150,000 followers in a single day. 150,000 followers in a single day. Yeah. And that's more than some people ever have in a single day. And I wasn't, um, I mean, you follow me. I'm not hugely political. I believe like, hey, do your thing. Um, I was very happy about this election, but everybody do you. Um, and I, I loved that experience because I thought, number one, if you are here and you can't do life with someone who doesn't vote like you do or love like you do or believe like you do, man, I am not the right person. I'm not the right friend for you. Because I really believe that our power as human beings is in being in relationship with people who are different than us um, so that we can learn and grow and change, hopefully. Um, but also, if I was deeply attached to those followers, if I was deeply attached to the amount of people who follow me on Instagram, I would have been crying. And I my genuine response was like, bye. Like, I don't, great. I don't want those kind of people in my community anyhow. Um, so, so I think that you have to be really careful about what you build that ego on because it does right. become an ego thing. Cause you're like, Oh, I got, you know, hundred likes on that thing. Um, and I've been that person. Like I'm not holier than now. I have been the person who's like, well, why isn't it growing fast enough? But what I've learned over time is, man, if you can just sort of delight in those blessings that you have and that community that's there, that's truly how you start to grow something special. You're right. I appreciate you being honest about that because it, yeah. it sometimes it's hard. We look at yeah. it, we're like, we only have 15 likes, but right. okay. But why are you right. doing it? Right. Well, and please also know that the algorithm on social media is not set up to have you get likes. Social media is set up so that you will pay to access those likes. That's so true. your your audience, like however many followers you have, 0.3% of your followers even see that post. And then amongst those people who saw it, then I all the time I have people that I like their stuff, but I don't necessarily like the photo because I'm just scrolling, right? Yeah, yeah. 
So it doesn't mean that it wasn't valuable or that you aren't well received or whatever. It just, it's whatever. It's a sort of made up, um, like it's like a fantasy, right? It's not right. real. I always, I, I really do when I, when I would have a hard day years ago, I would try and imagine myself explaining to my grandma who was very close with, who's gone to heaven, but always with me in spirit. Um, but I always try and imagine myself trying to explain to grandma, even what social media is and why I'm upset about it. Like, <laughs> oh, well, it's this made up thing that travels through air like waves and um, then people um, show pictures and then other people like them with like cartoons or tell you you're ugly or like, I try and imagine like my grandma being like, what? Why would you care about that? So take social media with a grain of salt. It's true. And just as one point, I was so worried about it, but then I used to get messages from people saying, I saw your post and you saved my life or I needed right. to read it or whatever. Right. So there's always going to be somebody right. watching, listening or whatever, even if they don't, you know, press that button. Absolutely. You're still Absolutely. a <laughs> What would you tell a woman who is wanting to start to be, who wants to build their business, that has a family to do all this? What advice would you give to them? I mean, just do the thing. I, I mean, just do it. Like I, I am a living proof that it is possible to build a very successful company and have a very successful relationship with your kids and be an awesome mom and enjoy the process and raise good people. And I just, I refuse to fall for the narrative I don't think that we can have it all at the same time, mm -hmm. but I do believe it's possible for us to hold those values that we really care about and, and, and have those be done well. You know, my relationship with my kids is incredible and they're good humans. And I'm sure there'll still be times where they act in jerky ways, um, but they'll continue to be good humans. And I travel and, you know, I have a big career and a demanding job and all of those things. And I just, you make the rules for you and your family. You make the rules. And society will try and weigh in and they'll try and have an opinion. But at the end of the day, you are the one who gets to decide how successful you're going to be. And I promise you that the first step to failing both your children and your dreams is listening to the opinions of other people regarding either one. Thank you. So everyone that's listening, just do it. It doesn't matter. Do you're going to, yeah. you're going to fall. You're going to fail. Wear my Nike. <laughs> just do it. Just take, just embrace it all. I think that's what we need to do. Embrace it and love it and go with your passion. So absolutely. Thank you so much, Rachel, Miss Hollis. I appreciate your time and I appreciate you being so honest. It's going to help so many people. Absolutely. Thank you, Annette, and have a fantastic day. And guys, if you're listening to this, be audacious. Just ask for the thing. You never know. Annette is living proof of that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Have a good day. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.